Okay, welcome back everyone. I have the Votal program open and I'm just going to run through some stuff really quick for you. Um, I have a Votal EM202 and I'm using a QS138 and my battery is 72 volts, uh, 36 amp hours, and 250 watt continuous, 300 watt peak. So I'm just going to run through the, some settings for you. First, you do have to connect your Votal controller to the software, and I do have a video that shows that, so I will put that up in this corner. You can go there. All right, once it's connected, this should auto populate with the factory settings of your motor. They may be different than this, they might not, who knows? All right, so the first model uh, mine automatically sets to EM100, even though I'm using EM200. I just leave that because it doesn't make a difference for me. Uh, battery voltage this is the nominal voltage of the battery, mine is 72 volts. Overvolt is um, the top volt, and this is set for 89.5. On mine, I actually have it set for 85 volts. If this is too high, like 90 volts, the controller will not turn on. Another thing about this overvolt is that if you have it set really high, like 90 volts, and you have regen set on, this controller will charge your battery up to 90 volts so you can fry it. So I have mine set for 85 volts. Your undervoltage is when it shuts off. It protects your battery from being too low. The soft under voltage is really nice. That um, limits your power. So let's say you hit 63 volts, your controller will limit your power, and you will, you know, have 50% power or whatever. So you can get home before you completely run out. Uh, under voltage variation, I haven't used that. Uh, bus bar amperage. This is really important. This is how much current you are going to pull from your battery, and that also determines how much power you can get. So, you know, 50 uh, amps times 72, that's your wattage. That's how much watts you're going to get out of that. Uh, if you set this for 100, that's how much you're going to get. So I would set your bus bar current to your continuous amperage. Um, in my case, I set it to 250. Uh, this uh, phase current, you don't change that. Okay, over here, your throttle voltage setting. This is for setting up a throttle. Typically, this will be set up factory for you. The low protect is um, is that when you start the controller, if it sees a higher voltage than this, it will not turn on the controller, you won't be able to go. And that's just because your throttle works from zero volts to five volts. As you twist it, the voltage goes up, and that's how it knows you know how fast you want to go. So if it if you start the start the bike and you have the throttle fully pinned at five volts, it'll see that it's above 0.3 and it won't go. Your starting voltage is when you want that to start going. So right now it's 1.24 and then this the end of the throttle is 4.31 volts. So right now when you twist it, once it hits 1.24 it's going to start driving and once you hit 4.31 it's going to stop. Um, well, it's going to stop going any faster. Uh, these are important because you can tune your range of throttle pull. Um, I like the start voltage as low as possible. Mine is 0.9 volts so that way it really starts going as soon as I start twisting the throttle. And my top end is a little bit higher than this 4.31. I think I have 4.7. And the high is just the limit of your throttle. Uh, I don't know why this isn't set for 5. Um, mine was not from was not set from 5 from the factory, so I just left it at that. Uh, start settings. Uh, starting torque. Uh, I think it's typically 0 or 1. Um, I actually have mine set for 150, and that uh, helped me with a uh, soft start issue I was having. Um, but typically, I heard that it usually is just zero or one. Nobody really messes with that. Uh, same with the second box. This is zero to 350 range. The larger the number, uh, the the faster the torque comes on. I haven't had an issue with that. I have mine set for zero on my controller. Uh, this rate of rise is your throttle response, um, and so since this is drive by wire or, or ride by wire, there isn't actually a throttle connecting the, or there isn't actually, there isn't actually a throttle cable, so it's all just twist and go. So the higher this number is, the faster the response is that your throttle was twisted. Um, this is how fast your throttle cuts off after you let go. All right, so that's pretty good for page one. Okay, now we are moving on to page two. 
All right, uh, this first box, this is for sport mode only. So this box only matters when you hit your sport mode button. And your sport mode is a timed momentary button. So you hit the button and then you go to sport mode for, uh, you know, 60 seconds. And then once it shuts off, you have a recovery time. All right, so this amperage is the maximum amp from your battery for sport mode. And so like my battery, um, I got 250 amps, continuous 300 amps peak. So I can put 300 amps peak here, and that will limit my sport mode to 300 amps. Uh, this second one is your flux weakening value. Uh, manual says uh, less than 3,000, but mine came stock at 6,000. So um, I left it at 6,000. Um, zero means no weakening. The max, which the manual said 3,000, but mine's at 6,000, would be the most flux weakening. And that means that uh, it weakens your flux and gives you higher RPM at the, uh, but then you lose torque. So if you don't have enough torque to spin that high RPM, lower this and it'll lower your RPM and you'll have more torque. Uh, the second box is for your motor shake. Uh, adjust this by 50 units. Um, and so if you get real shaky motor, just adjust this and try it out again. Uh, these two boxes are for the how long sport mode is going to be enabled. So 60 seconds, that's a minute. That's a really long time. Uh, usually you only use sport mode for like a drag race or if you want to pass somebody or if you just really want to have fun. I only honestly think you need 15 to 30 seconds. Your recovery time is how long you can't go back into sport mode to let the motor, battery, and controller cool off. 180 seconds is pretty good. Um, and remember, this only affects your sport mode. So you could mess with these numbers all day and you'll never notice it if you don't have sport mode. This is your downhill electric brake assist. You've also got uh, downhill uh, control and hill hold control. Uh, this is a checkbox, yes or no. This just applies uh, engine braking so you don't roll away when you're at a stop sign on a slope. I don't use that. Uh, this um, HDC enable, this is... Um, this limits you when you're coasting. My understanding is that this limits your top speed when you are coasting. And so it doesn't allow you to go over an RPM if you were like cruising down a hill and you had so much momentum that it didn't want you to fry your engine. Um, if you have this enabled, it will limit the motor to 9,000 RPM. And I keep saying engine and motor. I'm sorry. I come from a ice or i come from an internal combustion world so i interchange them sometimes by accident uh so if you have this set at 9000 rpm and this enabled your motor cannot spin past 9000 rpm uh, this is kind of nice because you can limit the top speed of your bike um but you can turn this off and try to go to the moon uh and this all right and so this next box is your speed limit uh, on or off, and this speed limit is calculated based on vehicle parameter. I do not use this limit. I use this one up here. This area over here, this is your flux weakening compensation. Um, this over here is your actual flux weakening um, to, to spin the motor faster, but this kind of compensates it and makes your motor less jittery and um, makes it accelerate better. Um, mine was at 250. And I had a weird little surge at low RPM, so I had to turn it down to 65. Or, I'm sorry, mine, mine was at 110. I turned it down to 65, and it's a lot better. Uh, you can mess with this a little bit. The range is 0 to 250. All right, three-speed. This is a really important box. If you have this enabled, you have a three-speed switch or a button three-speed. Mine is the switch. Button is kind of cool because you can just kind of switch between them, but it's a little bit more annoying to set up. Okay. So if you have three speeds, uh, you've got low, mid, and high. Uh, their translation isn't the best, but this is high. This first column is um, your percentage in each mode. So right now it is set to 60% of full power. And if you remember back on page one, right here, your bus bar amperage, that's your maximum power. So this 60% is 60% of that bus bar. And then the medium range is 80% of that bus bar. And the high range is 100% of that bus bar. So you can set those to change your different modes. Okay. This box over here, this is for sport mode. Okay. So when you press sport mode, it goes, 
it doesn't go to low or medium. If you're in low or medium and you press sport mode, it actually skips those and goes to high, which gives you 100% of bus bar. And then it gives you this section, so 100% more of the bus bar. So, um, you know, normally that would be, since it's 50 amps, it would give you 50 amps here and then another 50 amps here. Um, and then it would limit you whatever you have set here. So if you had 50 amps up there as your high power, and then you had, you know, 75 amps here because that was your max your battery can put out even if you have 100 percent here it's only going to give you a maximum of 75 so that's how the sport mode works uh this is your flux weakening for medium and a high uh, i don't believe you have flux weakening in the low uh these are typically set from the factory so you should not have to mess with those uh, if you do mess with them very carefully um soft start this is simply if you want a softer start when you are accelerating. Um, I I have it enabled on mine, um, but it's at 16. And so the lower it is, the slower the bike starts out, so it's not jerky from a standstill. Um, I have mine, I think, set on 16, so it's, it's basically turned off. Um, it's a pretty hard start, but that's the way I like it. I'm used to it. All right, that is page one and page two. Uh, I will get into page three, display and port settings in another video, but I think that these two pages are really important. Thank you. All right.